Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. Now, before I can put this engine together, there are many checks I have to do, and there are good reasons for all of it. Usually what happens is when someone wants me to build an engine for them, they either bring me a block because it's the block out of the car and it matches the car, it's the original block, or they have picked up a block somewhere they want to use, or they ask me to get a block for them. Either way, the block has got to get checked out, which means I have to take it to a machine shop, have it Magnaflux cleaned and checked for any cracks. Uh, well, now, when I take my block or a block to a machine shop, I take the block, the crank, the rods, the pistons, the bearings, I take it all to the machine shop. So, when they're checking it, and if it's a used block, most likely the cylinders are out around, so they're going to have to be machined. I usually have it machined 30 thousandths over. Once or twice I went to 40, but that was uh, in a rare occasion. But usually you machine it 30 thousandths over, and they machine it to match the pistons, which is why I take all the pistons with me to the machine shop. Then after they bore all of the cylinders to match the pistons, and it's Magnaflux and there's no cracks, then I have them put the crank in, and bolt it up to make sure that the clearance is right for all of the journals, for the mains. Then they put the rods in. If it's a stroker, I have them do the stroker clearance machining there because after they're all done, they can take it apart and put the block through a wash to clean it thoroughly to make sure it's 100% clean. All the oil passages, everything is clean, and I receive the block perfectly clean. They also, since they have the rods together, will balance the rotating assembly with the crank. And if the crank needs to be polished or machined down to match the mains or the rods, they will take care of all of that. And it's, a, it's an expense, but it's a nightmare or uh, it's a problem that you can avoid trying to do some of that work yourself. Now you can do that yourself. I had to do that with this. Uh, we're going to go through that. But I'm explaining to you what I normally do. Now for this block, this, this um, engine was going to be assembled by someone else. The owner of this took it to someone to have it built. Uh, for some reason or other, that person could not continue, and I was asked to, to put it together. Now, the, uh, the block was machined. I, um, I was told it was machined by a shop that I know very well. The guy who builds engines, who owns that shop, he's an incredible engine builder. He's a Pro Mod champion. The engines he built are hundreds of thousands of dollars, so I trust not only his machine work, but his opinion. The problem is, I don't have the receipt from his shop that says what he did to the block, even if it passed magnafluxing, so I'm taking it for granted that it was actually done. It does look like it was line honed, so it had to be torqued up with the, with the girdle on it, with the bearings and the crank and, and a lot of this is assumptions. I don't know if it was done, like I said, because I can't prove it. So, starting from scratch, as you may be, the first thing we have to do, first thing I have to do, is make sure that we have proper clearance in the main bearings so that the crank is ready to roll, the literally ready to roll, and that the block is ready to accept the crank and the clearances are, are correct. So the first thing we're gonna do is check all the main bearing clearances and we're gonna use plastic gauge. The first step in all of this is to remove all of the main caps. Once they are removed, clean both the cap and the block.
Now I'm going to place all of the bearings in the block, making sure that the oil holes align with the holes in the block. Once those are installed, I put a light coat of oil on all the bearings. I took the crankshaft out of the packaging and cleaned up all of the oils. Now I'm simply going to very carefully lower the crankshaft into the block. Give it a little spin to make sure that it's moving freely. Now I want to align the crank so that there are no oil holes pointing up. I want the tops to be completely flat, so no oil holes pointing up. Once the crankshaft is in position, I clean off the top of all of the main bearing journals with lacquer thinner to make sure it's completely oil free. Now I'm going to put the plastic gauge into place. Plastic gauge is simply a round piece of wax that you put in place and as you clamp down the bearing it smushes out and it tells you the clearance between the surfaces. I just cut a little piece and put it across the entire surface of the bearing all the way down on all of the bearings. Install the bearings to the bearing caps but do not put any oil on them. You don't want any oil on the bearings because you want the plastic gauge to actually stick to the bearing so you can read how much the clearance is after you torque down the bearing caps. Now I can torque them all down to spec, which is 90 foot-pounds. I'll do that in two stages. First I'll do the 40, then to 90. It's very important during this part of the process to not turn the crank. After they're all torqued, untorque it and remove all of the caps. Put the bearings next to each other and verify that the plastic gauge is the same size through all the bearings. If it's not, it means that there's a bearing, journal, or something that is wrong and the crank needs to be machined to match the other journals. Now I can check the clearance by cutting off a little piece of the packaging, holding it next to the bearing, and trying to match up the size of the plastic gauge to the packaging to tell me what the clearance is. Optimal clearance for this engine is two thousandths, two and a half thousandths, so I have to look at both the crank and the block to make sure the bearings are similar. As you hold the packaging up to the plastic gauge on the bearing, you can see there's these little marks starting with two, three, four, five, six. The red plastic gauge goes from two to six thousandths. Now it was tough to tell they certainly weren't two, but they were around three. So I'm going to say it was between two and three. And we'll say the clearance on all the main bearings was good. If you've watched my other engine building videos, you know that I'm extremely clean. And I talk about FM all the time. FM being foreign material or FOD, foreign object debris. And that plastic gauge on the bearings is FM. So take your time to take all the bearings out clean off all of that plastic gauge on both bearing halves, put your bearings away in the original packaging to keep them clean, wipe out the block, wipe off the cap, clean everything off, and then put a bag over the engine to keep it nice and clean until the next time you work on it. You have just clearance checked all your main bearings. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.